Hello, and welcome to the Psych Board meeting for Tuesday, January 24th, 2023. I'd like to call this meeting to order. We have the board minus Mark here today. We have the town manager, the town clerk, and a member of the public. Uh, let's stand for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First, we have the approval of the meeting minutes from January 10th, 2023. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Second motion. Motion and a second. Any further comment? All those in favor? I took to right now. I get to realize I got the good chair. Yeah, you guys are <laughs> not falling over. All right, uh, we have our first public comment. Does anybody from the public wish to make a comment? I will close the first public comment. All right. Public hearings and approval. We have medical marijuana cultivation facility license renewal for One Blackmore Road, Williams Greenery. Go ahead. Um, Mr. Stope is actually out of the country right now, so that's why he's not in attendance. Um, checked with code. There's no active complaints or violations. Um, this goes for both One Blackmore Road and Two Bow Street, uh, Williams Greenery, the main canyon connection. They're under the same... Uh, ownership, Mr. Stilfen. Are they under the same license? They are two di two different licenses. Okay, two different licenses. Um, one the one Blackmore Road. It's a cultivation facility. Two Bow Street is the um, medical caregiver retail storefront. That's across right the street. Right around there. Yeah. So um, with uh, again, butters notices were sent out, and just as a last courtesy to the neighbors, and have uh, no feedback. So I recommend waiving. The public hearing and approving both licenses. Um, so, uh, the Bow Street location. Um, no complaints from neighbors or anything like that? The only complaint, um, no, there's no active complaints. We had a complaint maybe a year and a half ago about um, parking, and we ended up painting some spaces and closing it off. And, and designated some spaces. We had some issues where it being too close to the corner or blocking in, and we haven't had that issue in over a year. Okay. How Any other comments? Just how long is the license renewal for? Is it a two-year license? One year. One year. One year. So that so mm -hmm. that even complaint was prior to the renewal yeah, last year. Correct. Yeah. Yep. What's the current? Uh, Fee for renewals? 3000 each license. 3000 each license, okay. With the exception of um, medical cultivation is 2000 okay. Everything else is 3000 All right. I'll make a motion that we uh, renew the license for the medical marijuana cultivation facility at 1 Blackmore Road. I'll second that. Any further comment? All those in favor? <clears throat> I'll make a motion to uh, renew the license for the marijuana Caregiver retail storefront at 2 Bow Street. I'll second that one. Any further discussion? All those in favor? All right. We have no one here to report on committees, no department reports. Appointments. We have Mary. And along came Mary. Yeah, and along came Mary. Please step right up. We asked earlier. Yeah, I know. Care. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just add, I met Mary at the Community Resilience Workshop at the library about a month or so ago and had the opportunity to talk with her about some issues. And um, I think she's right in line with what Envision Burrick is about and looking forward to see her contributions. Please uh, state your name and your address for us, please. Mary Ignatiatis, 23 Overlook Drive. Okay. So why do you want to join the Envision Berwick Committee? So my partner and I moved to Berwick about two years ago. And, uh, you know, for the reasons that I think a lot of people are starting to move to Berwick, it's still close enough to a lot of major job centers, but offers a really high quality of life. 
Like I can hunt out my backyard in the morning and then be on a Zoom call with people all across the world like 30 minutes later. And that's pretty incredible and unique. Um, in addition to that, we have this really strong local agriculture. Like I've been working with local food for a long time and I have never seen a local food system this good or this resilient. And I want to make sure that as Berwick is moving into the future, we are actively protecting that. Um, it would be really cool if we had systems in place to make us more resilient, not just from having local food, but also maybe more local energy so that we don't spend two days um, figuring out what to do with ourselves because the power is out. Um, my background is in uh, rural economic development. I came to Maine originally to pursue a master's in forest policy and economics up at UMO and uh, worked there looking at rural revitalization up in Millinocket and in those regions around new forest technologies and um, you know new agricultural products and and new ways of thinking about agriculture are certainly part of that land use equation, too. Um, so that's sort of my background. Uh, I've worked for one of the largest timberland and agricultural land managers in the world doing uh, sustainability and investment assessment work, and now work for a company that's based in Vermont um, doing more project-based work. I wanted to, to move away from kind of global stuff to, to have my hands on more specific community investment projects. Uh, so that's, that's my professional background. That's my research background, and I'd love to bring that to, to Berwick. Terrific. Any questions? No. When you talk about sustainable energy, what you mean, like solar? Or, yeah, like what if I thought this many times today as I was driving around trying to find a place with Wi-Fi with my <laughs> dog in the back, um, you know, like, wow, if our house had panels and a battery, like, I could be at home right now. <laughs> that would be neat. Um, or maybe some farmers could make some extra income by like, you know, agrivoltaics is a thing that, that can help with some of the issues that normally come up with solar in terms of land use. Um, I think there's, you know, there's a lot of options out there and that would be something to explore together as a community. Well, we do have a, a good number of solar farms that are currently in the works around right. town. Mm -hmm. um, and, and sadly, some of the hinder, uh, you know, hindrances to that is like is at the CMP level because we need you need to have the three it's those connections. Power, you need to have the, yeah. the the I mean, like yeah. uh, I had explored doing a a project in Lebanon, but they were like, we already have so many projects, we literally can't fit it on the capacitors that we have, so you kind of can't do anything <laughs> with that with that project. So it's like, sadly, that's where we kind of. But uh, yeah, I definitely, I, I wish I had panels and stuff like yeah. that, that I could just, and I had a battery, because I could just sit there and let that charge all day. I have all the sun in the world, and, right. you know? Um, yeah, I have no issues or questions. Anybody else? No, I think oh, it'd be a great yeah. asset to the, to the committee. Yeah, I, agree. I move that we appoint Mary Ignatiatis. That was good. good. Nice. Uh, to the Envision Burnwick Committee for a two-year term. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Welcome aboard. Woohoo! Thank you. Thank you. And our condolences. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a that's a great committee, and it's yeah. a lot of like you, hardworking, smart people who really want to make sure the town thrives. And um, I mean, I think we all want that, but I mean, like yeah, that's a yeah. it's a very specific you know group of people that are. They're doing great work in making um, Berwick a very uh, fun place, a very nice place. Without losing its small town charm. Yeah, that's that's you know? the other thing. Just but like, having the resources without losing that. I mean, I gr I've grown up in a small, small town, and it's just like almost too small that you can't really even like get a community together because it's just like everybody's so sporadically. Yeah. That, like we're pulling people together with various projects and committees and you know, activities, and I want that to continue. <laughs> um, we have no unfinished business for tonight. Town manager's report. So, Bob, did you ever do this to get the word out? Rec Commission's looking for two members. It might be less, but last time I talked, it was two. So um, reach out to the rec department under the rec uh, page on the town website for more information. They're up to some great things. Lisa Vargas and I met with Maine Water on the customer service side. 
last week to go over the transition. It was a really productive meeting. They're going to continue along with our established rules and regulations, um, and it's to, to minimize disruption, to make it as seamless as possible. And when bills come out next quarter in April, bills will be able to pay, be able to be paid by a mailed check. There's also options at Western Union. There's a Western Union in, in Summersworth. You can go right in and pay there. They're a partner with them. There's not really any local banger savings, but same same idea. You'll be able to make payments there. Or electronically, one of the um, advantages with Main Water, it's just an added bonus, is the ability to sign up for auto pay. That was something we were not able to do with our department. Also another added bonus is no longer going to be a transaction fee for paying, on, paying online with a card. I have finally uh, been working with um, some ADA companies to work on replacing our wheelchair lift. Finally have a quote back. Um, second quote I have, and they're comparable prices. It's 85, or excuse me, 30 $8,500, and the lead time is 10 to 12 weeks. We initially budgeted $70,000. We were going to go for a vertical lift, but that price ended up coming back uh, substantially higher because we were looking at installing a vertical lift, possibly outside, and the cost would have been around $70,000, but bringing it inside, you have to build an elevator shaft, and that cost is $170,000 on top top of the 70 so so this is to replace the existing lift yeah replace, replace the existing floor. lifts and they are notorious for for breaking but we will keep up with preventative maintenance as much as possible um i'd recommend we consider installing a permanent ramp at the back of the auditorium if the uh, lift does break we actually have a you know manual access to the back of the auditorium how are we going to access the ramp to the back of the auditorium? You know, that's one of the things we discussed before is, is there's no parking out there. There's no sidewalk to it. So we'd have to take care of all that, you know, also. Yeah, we'd have to make some improvements to Eleanor. That'd be the quickest way. But the other option, you know, worst, I guess the worst case scenario is they have to park and basically do a complete 360 around the building. To access it, but there are some things we can do to Eleanor. Is people park at the staff parking lot where we have two ADA spaces, handicap spaces, to be able to go, come down the sidewalk here and then cross Eleanor because Eleanor is pretty treacherous right now. It's just <laughs> way wider than it has to be. Well, this has been an issue for ever. As, as, as I mean, I don't know when that lift was put in, but apparently it's been broken for at least 10 years. 20 years it's been it's been a been a major issue so i'm glad we can finally make progress on it um you said you had uh this was the second bid is um do you have a recommendation on one company over the other i can i let me get back to you next meeting and i i can show, show us the quote show you side the apples, side. The apples, yeah. The apples and yeah. yeah so yeah we need to do something i was really i mean badgering them to get us a quote so we can get it. The lead time is 10 to 12 weeks. So I think ultimately, as long as we have it installed by the next vote, that's really where we want to be. Some of these, I, I don't know what it is, but some of these companies, to get them to give you even a quote, I had to, I had to chase down a sprinkler company for two months just to get them to give me a quote on putting sprinklers in a building. Like, that's your job. That's, that's the only thing your company does. Just send me an email. That's all it takes. I mean, we know what's going to cost. Yeah. Uh, the Route 4 safety study meets to review. Uh, there's a technical memo that was generated. I actually can share it to the board. Uh, just goes over levels of service and just kind of preliminary study for the Route 4 study. And that meeting will be on the 31st at 1 p.m. It's by Zoom. Um, Mark was is participating in that study. And if you want to participate just let me know i can send you the zoom link and last thing i have i've proposed february 23rd for the gun range workshop north uh, Dwayne at north barracks bringing it to the select board tonight and if if that's a go then i'll reach out to the 
neighbors, reach out to the gun range folks, and um, get us all together for that workshop. Is it going to be held here in Berwick? It'll be held here. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's it? That's it. Terrific. Um, all right. Any questions from the town manager? All right. Uh, we have no select board communications. We have the approval of accounts payable and payroll warrants. All right. We have the payroll warrant number 47 from uh, January 12, 2023 for $53.73. We have the payroll warrant number 49 from January 18, 2023 for $76,632.95. And we have an accounts payable warrant number 49 from January 24th, 2023 in the amount of $348,863.45. I make a motion that we pay our bills. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? And the town will stay afloat. All right, uh, new business, proposed amendments to the personnel policy. <clears throat> So this change is proposed. Um, I mean, first and foremost, uh, continuity between staff, but uh, brought forward in a, I guess, more an emergent manner because there's some issues with our Trio software. The Trio software is built to the main purse specification where the retiree hire 5% contributions report reported under the employer not the employee. So the finance department manually modifies a trio generated file each time to have it come from the employee rather than employer. So the recent issue that has happened is, yes, trio can do many things. Uh, it, it just has issues where there's this one, it has one code for the retiree hire at two different percentages. And uh, last meeting, we talked about what the financial impact for that. Um, it, would, it would impact two employees who are currently retiree hired, and that the two and a half percent would be a total of five thousand two hundred and sixty-eight. And uh, if they are still in the main PERS program, we would be contributing rather two point five percent. It'd be fourteen point eight percent, and that cost would be thirty-one thousand one hundred eighty-six dollars. Yeah, I mentioned this with the police contract. Obviously, right now we're paying zero, zero percent. So the cost is currently zero. I do have a Go question. Ahead. So the people that are listed here, <clears throat> both of them will fall into the police department. So that there's the just so I understand it. There's a five percent fee for main purse, and the town is deciding that we're not going to pay the full five percent. We're going to split it with the employee. Correct. So we'll be contributing a two point five. And the employee will contribute 2.5, which is a lot of standard practice I've seen in the state. Um, that still saves the town considerable amount of money because paying 2.5 percent for these employees is a lot cheaper than paying the full percentage to main PERS if they were still actively engaged in main PERS. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And so what we're doing here is because of a, and I don't want to call it a glitch. But the you know, programming thing is because uh, I know the trio is working on this, so there may be a point where they can fix this, because mm -hmm. um, other towns or other municipalities has run into the same issue. I, I called around and asked, and, and they are. So uh, my question is, is this policy is in place um, just basically for bookkeeping reasons, so that we can adequately... Uh, record that 2.5 is, is by the town and 2.5 is by the employee. So it's basically a coding issue. Am, am I correct in, in that? Um, what's, what's your question? What it? So this is not, this policy change yeah. is not because we are allotting them uh, additional or more money trying to circumvent the TRIO system itself is there's an issue, they're working on doing it, but until they do, this is just for recording purposes. We want to ensure that in the record it shows the employee's paying 2.5 and we're playing 2.5. If the system was working the way it should be, that's all it would be doing is just showing the split. 
but because there's a glitch, it's not doing that, and that's why we need this policy. It's just so that we can clarify for people that it is, we are splitting it with the employee. To clarify, the issue is that we have we have two sets of like uh, of emperors, you know, like right, a regular full time. We have and retired. Yeah, we have uh, the the majority is the two point five two point five split. Yep. For the retire for the rehire retire rehires, it's supposed to be. Five percent, and it's all supposed to be on the employee. But because we already have a split set up, right? We can't, we can't do both at the same time. We can't have both a split and a all going to one. Right. That's what yeah. I'm saying. They can't code it correctly. Yeah. So in order to ensure that our records are accurate, we're creating this policy so that there'll be documentation that this is what we're doing. Because the trio system doesn't allow you to document it the way that it's actually being done. So right now, basically, uh, the finance uh, people are just doing it manually outside the system. They, I believe, there's they're still going to have to do it manually, um, but it's I mean it still gets into the no, but I mean still, like they're still they're all... having to go out and do something separate for these two employees. So right so right now, um, yeah, I, yes, that's true, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, my only question is: it, like, obviously, this will make it more streamlined and easier. Is it worth the five thousand dollars a year to change the personnel policy versus having finance just do it manually? Um, well, even without the trio issues, it would. I would still be bringing this forward for, you know, if we're doing the two and a half percent contribution that we would do it across the board. Okay. So hypothetically, even if Trios could accommodate this glitch or this if yeah. this issue, you'd still want to do this for the sake of being uniform throughout the town. Correct. Okay. Okay. So it's not costing the town or the taxpayers any more money just because we're clarifying and documenting the appropriate amount. Yeah, we're not we're not going to spend any more money because of it be, because of this because of this issue. This is something that I would have brought forward anyway. I'm only bringing it forward today because it is an emergent right. calculation. Okay. It'd be something that ideally through the personnel policy, I'd stack up you know, maybe eight to ten amendments and bring it all forward at once. Right. Okay. Any other questions? I will hear a motion. I make a motion that we approve the proposed amended retire rehire section 3.9 retired main purse rehire policy as presented by the town manager. I will second the, the, the motion. Sorry. Any further discussion? Questions, comments? Just to be just to be clear. It's not going to cost the town any more money than what we're doing now. Well, well, so it'll be it'll be five thousand dollars more a year. It'll be, so basically, these two employees are getting a raise. Wait, wait, okay, back up. I thought that's what I asked because you said that they were going to do this anyways. You just couldn't. That's what I was trying to ask you: is is this costing the town any more money, or are we just changing the policy so that we can accurately I document? This is data going. Yeah, it's no. Because because are, are they already Me? getting this? Are they already? Get, is the split already occurring? No, it's the two and a half. The two and a half percent. Oh, okay. The two and a half percent was for the, okay. the two and a half. Two and a half percent that's already in existence is for the map contract police. But not for these individuals. Not for anyone that's under the personnel policy. Not, not for anybody who's contract. retired and rehired. That is not in that particular union where it's yeah. clarified before. Not union. So the, this is non-union. Non-union. Yeah. Okay. So, so that is different. So they. So it is an additional amount of money. It is. I, I think. I think we really need to have Lisa Vargas sit down and talk to us about this. I'm going to withdraw my my motion because and I I made the motion. I wasn't clear. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I'd like some. I, I think as I well. think we need more clarification on this. You know, is is <clears throat> you know we're get, coming into the budget season. Is that's typically where we address things as salaries and and mm -hmm. wages and things. And um, you know, just to do this now. And, and it's going to cost the town money, you know. Yeah, and, I, I didn't realize. That's what I was saying is I thought this was yeah. already I, 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 I would suggest we have Lisa Vargas here to talk to us about it, you know. Uh, yeah. you know so, we can... so do we need to make a motion to table it to the next meeting? Please. I make a motion that we table the proposed amended retire rehire policy until the next meeting when we can get additional questions answered by the finance director. I will second that motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? We'll talk about it in two weeks. That's what I was trying to read through, too. I was like, hold on. <laughs> okay. I, my apologies. No, I, no, no, I, no, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, we're starting to get confused with all the different back and forth. That's yep. why I think, you know, we need to have finance here. Yep, I agree. All right. We have no quick lane deeds, no abatements. Second public comment? I do have... Uh, I don't know if it's the town manager or public comment, but um, I thought the uh, fire chief was going to be here. Yeah, I can give him a call to see. I know that they were, he was going to be at the shelter at the middle school. Um, I can give him a call and see what his status is if you want to do a recess. Well, or... well what we could do is also is um, we just have some questions about preparedness for the next storm and about the shelters. If we could maybe just, um, if you could find some of that information out and get it around to us. Sure, That absolutely. would just be appreciated so that if people approach us, we are all, we giving, this, we're all giving the same answer. And, and uh, I think, it, you know, we need to have some clarification about, you know, if the middle school is our emergency shelter, is how do we, how do we know when the school district's going to open it? You know, that, that's a question I have. Is how do we coordinate between them? No, it could be all fine with you no know, Dennis saying, "Hey, we need an emergency shelter," but until the school opens it up, yeah, so we need some clarity. Right, and that's the that. question I was going to ask him: is who is he coordinating with to ensure this opens, and does he have adequate staff, volunteers, to staff it? Should he open it? So, is it town employees who are manning it, or is it volunteers? Is there a list out there? I did have a couple of people who reached out to me and just said, "Are you guys running a list?" I mean, I. I can volunteer for a few hours. What's what's your plan? And so I just and I also want to make sure that our answer is unified. That if we get asked, mm -hmm. this, we all say the same okay. thing and we have the same information. So if you could uh, reach out to the chief and just find that out for us and let us know so that we can also put it out. And uh, then I would also we I know we talked about this briefly, but um, we do have a town notification system in that you have to voluntarily opt into. If maybe we could um, put that out in some public places like the town office, the library, maybe ask the restaurant or the post office and try to get more uh, mm -hmm. citizens signed up for it so that communication can go out a little bit better, not only in the winter, but with uh, any other issues that come out. This is just a good reminder to kind of get that notice out there. Get the schools involved to send kids home with a flyer. Yeah, that might not be a bad idea either. Um, I don't know how many. My concern is we have a lot of elderly, and and so maybe even see if we can't drop off some flyers to those little pockets um, and have people fill it out. Maybe we we'll get some volunteers to help with that as well. Just I just want to make sure that everybody gets notified that we do have shelters, and when they are and not open. And who is the who's the best contact person? Because um, I I wondered that is I'm reaching out to you. Should I have been reaching out to the chief? Should I have been who is the person that we should be reaching out to if we get inquiries? I think it, both. Ultimately, where that dynamic in, in times of, of an emergency coming down, it, I think reaching out to both is appropriate. Okay. If it's an email, CC. If there's a, if there's something, I mean, if there's something, if you got to make one call, you can only make one call. You probably, you know, the emergency management director is who I would recommend. But you know, if it's a text or email. Okay. All right. We have no executive session. Any other business non agenda items? No, nope. don't take it from me. Maybe that's where it should have gone. Sorry. It doesn't matter. It's all, and you just started a little bit early. That's all. Now, um, yeah, obviously, the last few days were really tough on a lot of people. 
Um, I, I haven't been without power that long and since, you know, ice storm. So, you know, it takes all, you know, everybody working together to get through, through the things that we did. And a lot of lost power and lost internet, lost work, lost school. So, but we will rebound. Um, and, and if I could just say, too, we talked earlier about the type of community that we have. So if you know your neighbors and maybe there's an elderly person who's living alone or a, an elderly couple, um, you know, reach out, stop in, knock on the door and just check in on them. See if they need anything would encourage that. Um, we did it on our street. Um, just, you know, just to kind of check in on, on one another, because sometimes it's hard to get the information around, but just see if they need anything. And then if we have to, we'll contact you to see what we can do for them. Uh, it may be early, but we are starting the budget process, and we are also, we have an election in June, and starting in June, these meetings will take place on the first and third of the month, uh, uh, Tuesday of every month. So, set your calendars, get ready for it, the change is coming. Um, don't want anybody to complain that they didn't know what was happening. Don't want anybody to say that. Uh, anything else? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Yeah. <laughs> All those in favor? Let's go. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Stay warm and safe. Yeah. Stay safe.